Hey guys, it's Jandal here. I recently finished through hiking New Zealand's 3,000 kilometer trail, Te Araroa. That took five and a half months. And if there's one thing I learned on that trail, it is the fact that you don't want to be carrying too much weight. It's important to have lightweight, efficient gear, especially for things like cooking and so on. And that's what we're doing today. We're going to be looking at a very uh, lightweight, efficient alcohol stove called the ECHS or the Easy Capillary Hoop Stove. Now there's a few things you need to know about this stove. First of all, as you can see, it's very lightweight. This weighs 8 grams. This particular stove can boil half a litre of water, which is uh, 2 cups, in less than 5 minutes on 12.7 grams of methylated spirits, denatured alcohol. It has some ridges on the inside which you can probably see. It's a double walled stove made out of a soft drink can. The function of those ridges is to suck up the alcohol and, and let them squirt out of these tiny holes. That means that all the flame is above the stove and it works very well in, in the cold weather because it's not affected by the cold of the ground and that's not something that can be said for most alcohol stoves. So it's efficient, it's light, it's very small, everything's good. Um, not many people use this stove. You've got to ask yourself why not? Well there are two reasons. The first reason is that most people just don't know that these kinds of stoves exist. Uh, most people using alcohol stoves are using like um, cat food cans and things like that for boil it using their alcohol. I've measured this against my cat food uh, stove and this is 50% more efficient in terms of um, the weight of fuel that gets used. The second reason people don't use these stoves is that they're difficult to build and that's uh, really the purpose of this series of videos to show you how to build these things. Um, there are other tutorials on YouTube and also on um, internet forums and I've, I've seen all of those videos, I've read all of the forums, I've spent hours doing that and I've spent hours building these things and I can tell you that the other videos don't tell you everything you need to know. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know so that you don't have to go anywhere else. So these videos might seem like they're a little bit long but believe me when you spend an hour and a half making one of these and it doesn't work uh, you'll, you'll wish that you spend a bit more time finding out how to do it. Let's look at the things we need to build the stove. That's what we're going to be doing in this video specifically is looking at tools and equipment. To build a capillary hoop stove you need a can. A single soft drink can about this size. This is 53 millimeters in diameter which is I think 2.1 inches. You can go wider or more narrow but this seems to be a good size, 53 millimeters, and that's what I recommend. Got a nice boil going there as you can see, and I'm not using a lid either. Stove's going nice, got a nice vortex going there. So 53 millimeters wide, the height is not important, but it needs to be at least 3 inches or 80 millimeters high. It can be a lot higher if you want, simply because we're going to cut this can in half and we're going to insert the top part into the bottom part. And if it's, the can's too short, you're going to end up with a short stove, which is it's okay, but it may not be optimum. The most important feature of this can is the fact that the diameter of the, of the hoop here is the same diameter as the body. This is critically important, um, because when we in insert the top into the bottom, we need to have a tight seal between um, the lid, the rim here, and the outer part of the stove. And in Western countries, most cans, the diameter of the lid is actually smaller than the diameter of the body. So you're going to have to go and find the right can. It's difficult to do in Western countries. I suggest you go into a, an Asian shop and have a look in there. I got this can from a Japanese store called Daiso. One way to find the right can is to get two of them, press them together and just see if there's a gap between the two lids. If there's no gap that means that they are um, the lid is the same diameter as the body 
If there is a gap, it means it's no good. You can't use it for making this kind of stove. You can use um, ca uh, these cans for using different kinds of stoves called um, capillary hoop stove universal. Uh, but you need three cans to do that. It's a more difficult build and it's not necessarily a better stove. I recommend that you, you make one of these stoves the easy type. I'll pour myself a nice hot cup of tea. You found your can. It's really important when you're in the shop that you look at your can. Um, because the first few stoves I made had dents in them. I, I just didn't notice that they had dents. Here's an example here. I think you can see a little bit of purple there. That's because um, when I started preparing this stove, I hadn't noticed in the shop that there was a little ding. It's probably not that important, but it might affect the, the performance a little bit. You might as well get the best can you can find. It's only going to take you a little bit of extra time. What I do is I hold it up to the light. I look at the light on the rim there and I turn the can slowly, feeling with my thumb as well. And you just make sure that the light doesn't um, you know, show any imperfections. And then I do the same around the rim, around the bottom rim there. Find the good can. It's a good thing to do. Okay, so we've found our can. What else do we need to make this stove? We actually don't need a lot of tools, but we do need one tool that is actually, uh, most households do not have one of these. And you do have to have one. It's called a pin vise. And it's basically a micro drill that you, um, you turn around in your hand like that. This cost me $3 on eBay. I bought it from China and it came with exactly the right type of drill bit as well. So, you know, three bucks is nothing, guys. Go and buy one. You can probably find um, one in your own country, but I, haven't, I don't see these around very often, so I bought one on eBay. You might have to wait three weeks or something like that for it to arrive from China. That's essential and that's the only difficult uh, thing to find. This drill bit is 0.8 millimeters, which for Americans I think is 132 of an inch. That's a good size. Anything between 0.6 millimeters and 0.8 millimeters is a good size. If you're wondering what 0.6 millimeters looks like, uh, it's pretty tiny. This one's 0.6. So, um, I actually would recommend 0.7 as being ideal. Alright, so we've got that. We need a cutting tool. You can't beat a pair of scissors, guys. I've tried quite a few different kinds of tools. We're going to be cutting um, around here um, and then um, optimizing the, the cuts. And you can actually do that quite easily with a pair of scissors. The only difficult part is that we're also going to be cutting around here and that's difficult with a pair of scissors, although it can be done, and I'll show you how to do that in a later video. You need measuring tools, guys, because um, what we're going to do is we're going to, in a later video, we're going to measure around the can like that, and um, we're going to put on the markings for where the ribs are going to go and where the jets are going to be drilled. So you need a piece of paper or a piece of cardboard for that, and obviously a ruler, any length is fine, um, and a magic marker sharpie sort of thing is good as well. That's just about all we need, um, although we are going to have to make these ridges here. And the best tool I've found for that is a Y-shaped uh, tent peg. This is an MSR Groundhog tent stake. I found that this is ideal for making those, those grooves there. If you don't have a tent stake like that, I've tried lots of different tools. And one of the best ones I found is this. I think most households would have one of these. It's a, um, just a fish slice with, made of aluminium or steel. Steel, I think. It's not as good, but it's good enough. So if you've got one of these, you can, you can get by using that. You're going to need some sandpaper. Not essential. If you leave the paint on the can, it doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't seem to affect the performance at all. Uh, but you know, it's not going to look as pretty. All right. So basically, that's everything in terms of the tools. Um, 
What we're going to be doing in future videos is we're going to start off in the next one by showing how to prepare the can um, and get it, getting it ready for, um, for building the, um, the stove. Stay tuned guys, do check out the next video.